World Oregon has been doing global conversations, we call our public programs, for over 70 years. And that can be everything from an ambassador coming to town and speaking about something going on in some far corner of the world. It could be about climate change. Today we have a program about climate change, which is both, of course, a local and a global issue. Great Decisions, which is one of our sort of flagship programs we have been doing since 1953. It is the oldest, largest grassroots public affairs program for people to learn about the world. And it was founded as kind of a, like a book club. People get together, there are eight key topics every single year that they will look at and they will discuss them. And what is wonderful about this is we exist in a community that is extremely well-read, well-traveled, and that cares. So programming for a community that has such an incredible relationship of care for the world around them is a deep blessing. World Oregon is an arena for discussions about all things international. You've been coming to these programs for years now. Mm -hmm. And what keeps you coming back? And what is it about the work that we do that inspires you? You get a diversity of, of scholarly uh, opinions. You get policy makers. You get a good cross-section. Generally, you get pretty intelligent questions from the audience. So there's a lot of chewing on what gets presented before it gets digested. And th there's enough variety in the topics that are chosen, and they're all timely. So it seems like it's a good way to get knowledge. I found that, like today, th th these discussions that we have on climate change today and the other issues are just totally relevant and interesting. So it feeds your, cur your curiosity? It does. One of the challenges of working for a nonprofit that is doing mission-based work and is involved in issues that are global is one would like to assume that every day you're doing something that makes a difference. It's not always that easy. You can check a box and you can go to a program. You can highlight a really, really important issue that is driving a lot of discussion across the globe. But knowing that you made a difference can be a challenge. Technology and media has made it really, really difficult for us to maintain a semblance of the public square. And I think certainly COVID compounded that. How do we inch back into the public square in a way that recognizes that we need to hear a diversity of voices? Voices that we agree with, voices we don't agree with, voices that inspire us or challenge us to think critically. So making a program on a challenging topic as a public vehicle is essential. When you look at the key topics that we were looking at 60 years ago, they're the same topics we're still looking at. We're looking at China, we're looking at energy independence, we're looking at civil rights, we're looking at global economy, we're looking at public health. The thing is, these are not light switch topics. There's a dimmer. They get brighter, they get a little more dim at times. And I think that we keep coming at these topics because they matter and they frame who we are. Having and sharing a prosperous future means we've got to balance all of these topics. It's really a blessing to program for a community that cares. And when I look at the DNA of the community that World Oregon lives within, with Oregon, Southwest Washington, these are people who are interested in civil rights and democracy and cooperation and the ways in which we find to be better together. So you couldn't ask for a better community to work with, not for, to work with, to develop conversations that matter. Mutual understanding is a cultural conversation. And when we can have cultural competency and look interculturally and find agreements, that is what moves us forward. It's not about policy, it's about people. <laughs>